Hi everyone! Today our course focuses on the BGP L3 VPN V6 over SRV6 T policy scenario, in which SRV6 T policies are used to carry BGP L3 VPN V6 data. In the previous course, we introduced the BGP L3 VPN V4 over SRV6 T policy scenario. As indicated by their names, the two scenarios involve different types of BGP L3 VPN services. BGP L3 VPN V6 and BGP L3 VPN V4. In addition to the difference in the L3 VPN service type, are there any differences in the configuration procedures in the two scenarios? And do these two scenarios have similarities? Let's dive into the details to answer these questions. Let's still take a network with five devices as an example. P1, the P, and the P2 all belong to AS100. A bidirectional SRV6T policy needs to be established between P1 and P2 to carry the IPv6 services on the CEs. The configuration roadmap in this scenario is as follows. First, enable is is on P1, the P, and the P2 to achieve basic root retrievability. Second, configure an SRV6T policy between P1 and P2. The configurations of the first two steps are the same as those in the BGP L3 VPN V4 scenario. Third, configure a BGP VPN V6 peer relationship between P1 and P2 to advertise routes between C1 and C2. We'll focus on this part later. The first part we'll talk about is its is configuration. The second part covers basic SRV6 configuration and SRV6T policy configuration, both of which are the same as those in the BGP L3 VPN V4 scenario, and therefore not described in detail. Next, let's turn our attention to BGP-related configuration. The first step involves configuring a VPN instance and CE access on each PE. Note that the BGP VPN instance IPv6 address family needs to be used on the PEs. The second step involves running the opcode and dt6 command to configure an end.dt6 seed for the specified VPN instance. This operation is optional because using an end.dt6 seed dynamically allocated by BGP is also allowed. After completing end.dt6 seed configuration, we can see that each end.dt6 seed in the local seed table of a PE is bound to a VPN instance. Moving on, let's see how to establish a BGP VPN v6 peer relationship between the PEs. The key steps are as follows. First, run the peer enable command to enable the device to exchange routes with the specified BGP VPN v6 peer. Second, Run the peer prefix seed command to enable the device to exchange prefix seeds carried by VPNv6 routes with the specified IPv6 peer. Third, run the segment routing IPv6 locator P1 command to specify the locator referenced by a VPN instance and add the seed attribute to BGP VPN routes to be advertised. If no end.dt6 seed is manually configured for a VPN instance, BGP dynamically generates such a seed after you run this command. Fourth, run the segment routing IPv6 traffic engineer best effort command to enable root recursion based on the seed attribute carried by VPN routes. SRV6T policies are preferentially selected for root recursion. SRV6B paths are used as best effort ones. The formats of these key commands are similar to those in the BGP L3 VPN v4 scenario, except that the types of used address families are different. After establishing the BGP VPN v6 peer relationship, we need to configure root coloring on the PEs to ensure that routes can recur to corresponding SRV6T policies. These configurations are similar to those in the BGP L3 VPN v4 scenario except that the BGP VPN v6 address family is used in this scenario. Finally, we need to configure and apply a tunnel policy on the PEs to import the IPv6 traffic on the CEs. These configurations are similar to those in the BGP L3 VPN v4 scenario. The only difference is that the VPN instance IPv6 address family is used in this scenario. 
after a BGP VPN v6 peer relationship is established. The devices exchange update messages carrying path attributes and an LRI. Next, let's take a closer look at this type of message. In the current scenario, the BGP prefix seed carries an unthought DD6 seed. The primary address family is IPv6, and the root prefix is the prefix of the IPv6 root sent from C2. These are the main update message differences between the current scenario and the BGP L3 VPN v4 scenario. We can see that the BGP VPN v6 root information is consistent with the information carried in the BGP update message. This address refers to the host IPv6 address, and 128 refers to the mask length of the host address. The detailed root information contains attributes, such as RDs and RTs, and the prefix seed carried by the root. This seed is actually the end.dt6 seed of the VPN instance on P2. Next, let's verify the configuration. We can see that the preferred BGP root on a PE first enters the IPv6 routing table of the corresponding VPN instance. The outbound interface of the root on C2 is displayed as policy 1, indicating that the root has successfully recursed to the SRV6T policy. P1 then advertises the root to C1 through the BGP peer relationship. The root first enters the BGP IPv6 routing table. After being preferentially selected by BGP, it enters the IPv6 routing table. The preceding command output shows that C1 and C2 can pin each other successfully. This indicates that the configuration is successful. That's all about the implementation of BGP L3 VPN v6 over SRV6T policy in the control plane. Then, what are the differences of packet encapsulation between the current scenario and the BGP L3 VPN v4 scenario? Now, let's have a look. We can see that in the BGP L3 VPN v6 over SRV6T policy scenario, the packet carries an SRH in which the last seed is the end.dt6 seed of the VPN instance configured on the peer PE. As we reach the end of this course, let's summarize the root advertisement and data forwarding processes in a BGP L3 VPN v6 over SRV6T policy scenario. First, let's look at root advertisement. Take root advertisement from C1 to C2 as an example. The root advertisement process from C2 to C1 is similar. Root advertisement between the CEs consists of the following steps. First, the BGP IPv6 routes on C1 are advertised to P1 through the eBGP peer relationship. The routes in the IPv6 routing table can be imported to the BGP IPv6 routing table before being advertised. The BGP routes on C1 will be advertised and imported to the IPv6 routing table of the VPN instance on P1. Second, the IPv6 routes of the VPN instance on P1 automatically enter the VPN v6 routing table. Third, VPN v6 routes are advertised to P2 through the BGP VPN v6 peer relationship. Fourth, the VPN v6 routes on P2 are automatically linked to the VPN instance based on the RTs carried. Fifth, after the VPN instance on P2 learns routes, it advertises the routes to the BGP IPv6 routing table of C2 through the eBGP peer relationship. Then the preferred BGP route enters the IPv6 routing table for forwarding. The different primary lines in the address families used for VPN route advertisement between the PEs. The data forwarding process in the BGP L3 VPN v6 scenario is similar to that in the BGP L3 VPN v4 scenario. The difference is that in the BGP L3 VPN v6 scenario, C1 sends IPv6 packets to P1. After receiving such a packet, P1 searches the IPv6 routing table of the VPN instance and finds the associated next hope information, which is an n.dt6 seed. The operations to be performed by P2 are similar to those performed by P1. That's all for this course. Thank you for watching.